Hey hackers, this is Int80, and today we are going to hack a phone. I'm MG. Int80 and I have been working on an OMG cable payload that targets Android phones with a reverse shell. Now, after playing with the timings, I was able to get these payloads down to about 13 seconds to execute the entire on screen payload. And after that, you can unplug the OMG cable and the reverse shell persists. Now, what can you do with a reverse shell in an Android? Well, the first thing that in 80 did was activate the camera on my Android phone and take pictures without me knowing it, front and back cameras. Other options include activating the microphone, looting the address book, contacts, photos, accessing the clipboard, the SMS messages, sending and receiving, GPS tracking, and a whole bunch more. Basically everything. Now we successfully used these payloads on Android 10 and 11, and it seems like it should work on Android 12, but you'll have to test it out and let us know. Now for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna use Metasploit to generate the APK that's used in the payload. Other people have started experimenting with this, submitting their own payloads to the Hack5 OMG cable repository, like this payload by Drusek. Now, what we're showing here is not a new vulnerability. The ability to install a malicious APK on Android has existed for a very long time, but hopefully we can make you more aware of this potential and the risk that comes from it. In fact, it's important to point out that there are multiple ways of generating malicious APKs. And later in the video, we're gonna show you some ways of detecting this specific payload that we're using here. Now, before I hand you off to in 80 I'm gonna go over some of the basics here. What we're gonna be using is an OMG cable C2C directional with key logging. Now these directional cables are different than all the other OMG cables because they change their functionality depending on what direction you have it plugged in. Now these directional cables are good for demos, training, and scenarios where you are the one plugging the cable in. Now these C2C directional cables have a USB logo printed discreetly on one end of the cable. That's the active end. Normally you plug the active end into a laptop and it will deploy the payloads against the laptop while the other end acts as a data sync and or charge source for maybe a mobile phone or really any USB 2 device you would plug into this end. However, if you flip the cable around and plug just the active end into a smartphone or a tablet, you can then attack that device. Now that's what we're gonna be doing in this demo. Now for this awesome Android reverse shell payload, I'm gonna hand you off to N80 to walk you through it. Some of you might recognize me from previous episodes of Hack 5. Yes, that's me. Or as the rapper in Dual Core. Or maybe as that guy who presents anti-forensics talks, some of which contain screaming goats. But today, we are working with the OMG cable from my friend MG to hack an Android phone. So let's talk about the setup here first. So what we've done is we've written a payload that downloads an APK or an Android application, installs it, and then we get a interpreter shell as a result. This gets us access to the Android phone. So let's talk about how all this works. Our first part of the setup is that we used MSF Venom to generate this Meterpreter APK. So this is just a standard Android application. Uh, you can totally take it apart, decompile it, see all the good stuff. What we've done is we've hosted that with an HTTP server somewhere on the cloud. We've written this Android payload for the OMG cable such that when the payload is activated, the phone will load Chrome, download the APK, go through some configuration steps, install, and then run it, which then, again, gets us our Meterpreter shell. Now, Meterpreter is a very common payload among pen testers and red team operators. It's been around for well over a decade, I'm pretty sure, at this point. So I thought this was really cool because the OMG cable kind of gives you a new payload delivery mechanism, if you will. What's awesome about the OMG cable is that it has remote triggering capabilities. So you don't even have to be physically present at the time that you activate your payload. So let's walk through the play-by-play. -play. Once the OMG cable is plugged into the Android phone and the payload is triggered, 
The phone will open up Chrome, load a new incognito window, and pull down the APK. Now, on our C2, or command and control server, we have a listener set up inside of Metasploit. This is going to catch our interpreter shell once it comes back. But the payload actually has a lot more to it. There's a number of steps we have to go through on the Android device, such as uh, allowing Chrome to be a source for installing applications and not sending the payload to the Play Store for scanning. So the payload itself, the OMG payload, is actually stepping through and configuring the Android phone to do all of the steps required so that we can get the APK onto the phone, installed, and loaded. And then this nets us our interpreter shell. This is kind of where it gets tricky because with Android phones, there are a ton of different ROMs and builds. So this Android payload is probably not going to work for you straight out of the box, but it is DuckyScript and it's pretty easy to reconfigure. As you can see on screen, the phone is making the request to the HTTP server in the top pane. The HTTP server serves up the OMG APK, that's our Android application. And after the phone goes through all of the necessary configuration steps, the phone runs the APK. And on the bottom part of the screen, we end up seeing our interpreter session. Running sysinfo, we see that, in fact, we are connected with a live interpreter session to an Android device, all thanks to our OMG cable. Let's talk about detection and artifacts. First, there is no persistence. Once that interpreter session is gone, it's not coming back unless it's manually reactivated. A common recommendation is to reboot devices every single night as a way to thwart persistence. Seems to work here. Additionally, once the payload is finished, there are still visual clues as to what's happened. Chrome, for example, is still at the forefront of the screen. I know that if I set my phone down and all of a sudden there's a new incognito window on my screen, I'm going to be very suspicious. Secondly, there's a downloaded artifact, right? There's the OMG APK that we downloaded. and there are a few places where that shows up. In the top menu bar, or your status bar, that'll show a new file download. Secondly, in your files under downloads, there's a new APK there. Additionally, the APK still remains and shows as main activity in the app listing with this default Android app icon. Totally stands out from branding among all other mobile apps. So there are a number of opportunities here to find out that something is weird on the device and should be looked at further. And again, no persistence at all. Now, we want to make a note that these detections are specific to the default settings for this malicious APK that was built in Metasploit. A lot of these detection opportunities can be cleaned up. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of other ways of building APKs that are malicious. For instance, one of the other tools out there that builds malicious APKs defaults to calling their app Process Manager. Now, if you go and look at the permissions in the Process Manager, you're going to see a lot of things that don't really make sense. So at least there's still a tell there. Also, Android apps can be configured to start on boot. There's a lot of other ways of advancing this attack. So it's important to really emphasize the fact that the core issue here is that Android does not prompt you for your passcode when performing risky behaviors like installing an app or modifying permissions. But hopefully this demo gave you some new information to work with here. Thanks again. My name is Int80. I'm the rapper in Dual Core. And I'm MG. Hack, Hack all, all the things. things. Fear and chaos come when I open my eyes. 